Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Quarantined Apple News. Crazy times, hope you're staying safe. I've got some crazy Apple leaks to go in the midst of it. Before I begin, I wanna mention one of the S20 Ultras from the giveaway hasn't been claimed. I'll be giving it away exactly a week from today chance to win down below. Now, in light of the 2020 iPad Pro release, we've once again updated the concept for our upcoming iPhone 12 Pro, and we've considered several options for how they'll implement the LiDAR sensor, the time of flight. Let me know which one is your favorite down below. Personally, I like the one with the LiDAR nestled in the bottom right. It looks very clean. We gave it a ring. In the center, a quad ring flash with a microphone in the middle of it, something I think Apple is perfectly capable of doing in 2020, but again, just speculation. I'm, I'm actually very curious to see how Apple will implement it. After seeing the iPad Pro LiDAR sensor up close, it is a marvel of engineering. The way Apple groups the sensors together in the bracket is just brilliant. They reduced the amount of materials, they introduced grooves in between the lenses. It just It's an engineer's dream of efficiency here. And we brought the same design over to the 2020 iPhone 12 Pro just to give you an idea of how Apple could implement this. And last year, we did the same thing for the iPhone 11 Pro. It turned out to be almost identical to the real deal. So I'm very curious how these will compare come September or even later because it supposedly has been delayed. And another bummer regarding the 2020 iPad Pro is the A12Z processor is literally just a rebinned version of the A12X. After reaching out to experts, Tech Insights has found that the old A12X processor was also a eight core GPU, just one of them disabled. The real difference between them is the thermal management. The a12Z can handle more stress for a longer duration of time versus the A12X. Now you guys may have seen some concepts floating around of the iPhone 12 Pro with a similar camera layout of the iPad Pro. That's not going to be happening. The only iPhones that will be getting the LiDAR time of flight sensor will be the iPhone 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max not the dual lens versions. That's abundantly clear and confirmed by many sources. I personally believe that Apple will nestle it in the bottom right of the lens. The way that the two pieces even click together with the current iPhone 11 Pro lens, that LiDAR sensor fits perfectly in that spot. So Apple will probably put it on the bottom right. And just seeing how the LiDAR sensor operates from a couple different sources, it is an incredible piece of technology. Yes, the iPad Pro may not be able to take full advantage of it yet, but by the time the iPhone comes out, you know, more developers will support it. There will be more apps. So the new iPhone will be able to take full advantage of it. Just seeing how well it maps the environment, how many dots it projects, incredible stuff. Okay, moving on to a crazy report by John of Front Page Tech. He's reporting on a briefing that Apple's been holding discussing the iPhone 9 release date. Apparently, they're actually considering releasing it in April due to pressure by shareholders and of course the current economic situation. It doesn't suit Apple to hold on to this device much longer. So they might be releasing it as soon as April. This is coming from an Apple briefing. Next thing you know, his source will be going out with Tim Cook golfing and we'll get even more info. <laughs> I'm just, I'm honestly impressed of how much information this guy is gleaming from these briefings. He's a fairly recent source, but been very accurate so far. Leading on to the next piece of news, which is that air power is coming back. Apple has not killed this project. It's only been in limbo. As I reported on earlier, a medium writer made it abundantly clear that there is no way that Apple would ever abandon an idea like air power. They'll merely tweak it, work on it, and bring it back in one way, one fashion, or another. He's given us exact details on how Apple will be bringing it back, what they're trying, and it's some very impressive stuff. Oh, and before I forget, the iPhone 9 may start at $449, just some speculation from Mark Gurman, but it does make more sense. The Apple A13 plus 64 gigabytes of base storage, yeah, it's not gonna be cheap. So, air power. I was overjoyed when I heard about this. AirPower is not dead. It's codenamed Callisto, an internal project, and Apple is trying to bring it back. They're trying to figure out by displacing the coils a little bit further apart from each other, trying to reduce the overlap between them, and in doing so, fix the thermal issues they had before they binned it. Apparently, there will be less coils inside versus version one, and the material they're testing now is a leather material. I reported on this earlier with Max Weinbach. They tried several different materials, including leather. They even tried wood, glass, and silicon and John is reporting that the material they're testing now is leather. He also mentions Apple believes this product is absolutely necessary in order to push a portless iPhone, which is rumored to happen as soon as next year. At least one of the iPhones will not have a port. 
We knew that Apple is working on a smaller version of AirPower, but apparently the actual product is still on. And he says that it may be canceled if they don't figure it out, but they are actively working on it. He also mentions they're having an issue with it not currently charging the Apple Watch series, which is unacceptable. So they're re-engineering it from scratch, hoping to fix all of these issues. This really shows you that Apple is dedicated to the portless future. With the new OS recovery feature, which removes the reliance on the computer completely and air power, you'll never need a cable in your iPhone life again. And unfortunately, John stands by the fact that the iPhone 12 will likely be delayed into October or November. Engineers weren't able to go to China because of the travel ban to finalize the prototypes. So that's still up in the air and will cause delays. And because the design has not been set yet, the iPhone 12 is still in fluid motion. Apple may change things. They may go back on some features we heard about and we'll be learning more about that in the coming months. Regarding the outbreak, he mentions Apple will start to reopen their stores in the first half of April on a location basis. They wanna have all open by the end of May. Even we, with the production of our cases, we've been affected by this outbreak and it's probably gonna set us back one to two weeks. So just wanna let you know, it won't be a terrible wait, but it will add just a little bit on top. Also funny to me, Apple is not happy at the absurd amount of leaks surfacing lately which goes to show you, I mean, there's probably a degree of accuracy there, especially since all of his recent stuff has been true. And there have been many news sources claiming the iPhone 12 Pro will be delayed by at least one to three months. And the latest article from Loop Ventures claims that Apple is still dead set on releasing in the fall. Apple usually takes three to four years to build an iPhone. So they're saying it's not something that's settled in just one year. There are many factors at play here and each iPhone has a huge development cycle behind it. Fall is still likely, they say. In other news, TSMC, China Times is reporting, is delaying the production of five nanometer chips for Apple, which would be the Apple A14, the insane over 3.1 gigahertz we've been hearing about. Apparently they're delaying that chip production by one to two quarters. It really doesn't make sense. All the news sources have different timings here, but it does seem more and more likely that we'll get a staggered release like the iPhone 10 and the iPhone 10R series, one to two months release after announcement. Wikichip reports that the Apple A14 with the new five nanometer process will have a higher density by 84% over the Apple A13 chip. Now with this new density, they can improve performance by 15% and keeping the same energy requirements or make it 30% more energy efficient while keeping the same performance. Also a solid report by my boy Ming-Chi Kuo. He's saying the 2020 iPhone 6.7 inch model, so the high-end model, will feature sensor shift image stabilization on the lenses. So instead of Apple stabilizing the optical lenses, they'll be stabilizing the sensor itself, which does provide added benefits such as being able to add this tech to the ultra wide lens, which currently has no stabilization, only digital. He's also saying this tech will be expanding to two to three iPhones in Apple's lineup in 2021. This sensor shift image stabilization was earlier confirmed by Digitimes. So now Kuo is also confirming it. You can be certain that's what Apple will be doing for 2020. And even better than that, Kuo mentions in 2022, Apple is working to bring a periscope zoom system to the iPhone. So that space zoom from the Galaxy S20 Ultra, yeah, we're getting that on the iPhone. We're just a couple years away from it, unfortunately. Wineback earlier reported that Apple was studying that for incorporating Face ID into the front bezel on the iPhone. And it's good to know Apple is exploring all options here. Also, the new Huawei P40 Pro features a 10 times optical zoom system. They're calling it the world's first multi-reflection super periscope. So there are two periscope zoom systems on the P40 Pro. Insane. I'll give it to Huawei. They handle their tech very well. They always are cutting edge here and the quality is just amazing in early reviews. A couple other things about the P40 Pro. The colors, incredible. I love that new sheen. It looks so futuristic. I love that they're exploring these things. Also, they've added a new digital assistant called Hey Celia, which is triggering people's series on iPhones. I wonder how intentional that was. Nikki Publication is also reporting that Apple is considering delaying the iPhone past its fall release. So we may be getting that staggered release. So many sources saying different things right now. One thing is clear is from this, Apple may be forced to consider an 18 month cycle, very similar to that of the iPad Pro, where it'll give them more breathing room as iPhones get more and more complex. I think it's only a matter of time until we switch to that model. They're saying the final decision on production, whether it'll make it on time, 
will happen in May. Foxconn, in the meantime, is saying it has hired enough workers to meet seasonal demand for the upcoming iPhone 12 Pro. So many of the pieces are set up. It's just Apple needs to make that final decision whether or not they can make it. And lastly, car key has been visualized. Max Weinbach's source has provided us with screenshots of iOS 14 in a car key interface. It looks awesome. Apple is reportedly working with BMW on this. It'll be their first client as 9to5Mac reports. And it's possible that it may be an ultra wideband exclusive. With ultra wideband, you wouldn't need to remove your iPhone to place it on the pillar. With NFC, you would have to do that, but theoretically this would work on both, just newer iPhones would get better functionality. I can't wait. I love how clean and integrated this is. Apple is definitely moving in the right direction. Thanks for watching guys. I'll keep you updated. It has been crazy. Stay safe. Peace.